so my first two solves of the day were pretty bad. But before the third solve, I went to sit down at the waiting area and my friend asked me what was my goal for this competition. So I said, well, I forgot my GCS3 at home, so there's no way I'm getting a good average on this Huanglong, which is my warm-up cube. Yes, I somehow remembered my warm-up cube, but not my main. Anyway, I didn't have my main with me, so I thought I could still get a good single, and I said, I want to get a 6 because for some reason I didn't have one yet, and I kind of expected to have one by now. I had a lot of low 7s, I'm just very bad at getting singles. So then I go up to do my third solve, and this happens. Now of course I was happy to get a 6, but what made me even happier was the fact that I called it right before it happened. So that solve could have been even faster, but I kind of hesitated during last layer, and I'll show you guys what I mean at the end of the video. But what happened next was even more stupid. Even when I'm at home practicing, if I get like a 5, I usually follow it up with a 10 or 11, and then I go back to having good solves. It just, uh, for some reason, this always happens. I would say it's something I need to work on, but this rarely happens anyway, so I don't feel like I can like actively practice getting better at this. Anyway, I already had 3 bad solves and 1 good solve, so I figured the average was over. So at first I was like, I have a counting 6, that might have just saved the average. But then it came out to be 9.03, which doesn't beat 8.90, which was my competition best. So this was the scramble I got, and the reason I'm showing it is because there's something really cool at the end. But I see that this one and this one were solved, so I was doing my cross on yellow. And blue could go in here easily, and orange could go in here easily. So in this case, what I do is I know that I'm going to do D followed by inserting blue and orange in some order, and then D prime to solve the cross. So here I had to think about which order made the most sense. Should I insert orange first or blue first? And notice how I have this pair here that's not affected by anything, so this could be my first pair if I want to. Um, but what I did notice was if I insert blue first, then that moves this corner over to here, and then orange pushes it onto the top. And having a corner in the top is better than in the bottom. So I wanted to see if there's anything good if I did orange first, and there wasn't, because this one will now remain in the bottom layer which is not as good as having it in the top. So I did blue first, and then just to further uh, do look ahead, this edge would end up being here with blue attached. This one would have the color here on top. So like that, so I did this as my first pair, and I already knew this one was here, so I knew this one was gonna be preserved when I insert these two. So I insert like that, and then I did these two, and then this one. Here there's a slight pause, I didn't really see this happen, but this got paired up at the end, and then as I inserted it, all the corners got oriented. Now if the corners are oriented and you have two edges oriented, then there's always a cool trick you can do here. And if you're right-handed, unlike what I did, so I did something different, but if you are right-handed, then what you can do is see that this piece is going to end up over here uh, when you solve this OLL. And what that means is you can look at all of this, and all of this gets preserved, except this one fills in that last spot. So in this case, if you can do two-side PLL recognition, you can see that this would be a G perm. But luckily for me, I do everything left-handed, which means I did it from this angle. And if you move this one down to here, this is a J perm, which is pretty easy to see. So I did that, and then the J perm. So one thing really cool I noticed here is that if this one's coming here, and so you know this is going to be a J perm right away, then the last three moves of this OLL is the same three moves as the beginning of the J perm. So technically what I could have done is go partway through the OLL, and then instead of doing this at the end, then just go straight into the J perm, uh, like that. So that would only work if the algorithm happened to begin exactly with those moves, uh, which I guess is just like a G perm, a J perm, and T perm, and I think that's it. But anyway, just thought that was really cool, and if I knew that before the competition, then maybe uh, there's a chance I would have messed up and got like an 8, but uh, there's also a chance I would have got like a 5 or something, so I just thought that was interesting. So there's also this OLL, where what you can do is look at all of these, and then predict this one coming down to here, and if you use that to complete this, there's a block here, and this one's the same, so this would be an R perm. And so you can use that trick to help you instantly recognize PLL. So I know I mentioned this trick before in one of my old videos, and you can check that out because there's tons of other tricks in that one as well. But the reason I'm bringing it up again is because that's a really old video, and this also helps me in an official solve, which is pretty cool. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys all next time.